I think we're a bit short on time, so I'll, I'll start. Hi, everybody. My name is Jérôme. I'm French. I live in Norway. And I work for a small company called uh, We Want to Know. Um, I'm going to talk about how we use Jenkins to make a build pipeline for a product called Unity 3D. Uh, a quick question first. How many of you know about Unity 3D? Like two out of... I don't know, 50. Um, how many of you are using uh, or are developing applications for mobile platforms? Okay, three. Um, so maybe this is a bit new to you. Um, some of the concepts I'm, I'm using here are reusable for iOS uh, development. So, yeah. Okay, so what do we do at, at We Want to Know? We, we write serious games. Um, games where you, you, you learn, actually, you learn math. And uh, we're working on our first product. Uh, our context. The, the first thing that we, we're a startup, we're a small company, we're actually two developers. Um, we are making several products out of the same code base uh, on different platforms, actually five. So Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, and the web. Uh, we have lots of different device types, so a lot of potential, potential issues to solve. And we are distributed. Uh, I'm in Norway and my colleague is in France. So. And we're using Unity 3D, which is uh, a tool I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to describe a bit afterwards. It's used a lot by the uh, independent developer community, and uh, it's, it's getting a lot of traction, I think. Uh, yeah. So... One issue we have is how to reach testers. Uh, so you, you cannot just test the game alone. You have to, to get feedback from uh, external people. And you have to have feedback from a lot of different people because once you have had the first impression, you have to get somebody else to test. And another thing is because of our context, we have to try to maximize automation. Here, here comes Jenkins. So for those who don't know, uh, this is maybe new to you. How do you distribute beta applications? Um, the problem, at least for uh, iOS devices, the uh, devices are jailed. So if you want to deploy your application that you build on your, on your computer, you can just drop, you cannot drag and drop it into your, your iTunes. It doesn't work that way. You have to wrap it on, uh, with some kind of DRM. Uh, actually, this DRM uh, contains something called a provisioning profile. Uh, what is that? Uh, it, it contains a list of um, device identifiers. Uh, you've actually, um, you create your, your pre provisioning profile on Apple website, uh, and then you download it and register it into Xcode, and then prepare, prepare a build for those particular devices. So if you want to uh, deploy to a new device, you will have to make a new build with a new provisioning profile. To ease the retrieval of these um, device identifiers called UDIT, you can use external services like TestFlight or Appaloosa, um, where people can register the device and you, then you can manage those devices and, and define who you're going to be able to send the applications to. So that's the, the, the basic theory behind mobile development in order to reach beta testers today. So what about Unity 3D? So the reason we are using Unity 3D today is that we, it, because it allows us to, with, with one code base, to reach different platforms. Okay, that's uh, risky today when you're a startup to, to, to choose one particular platform over another one. Uh, it's a game engine and authoring tool that's based on Mono, uh, and you can write in different, platform, in different languages. We're using C Sharp. It contains model develop for those who don't know. So how does it uh, look like? You have uh, a view in which you can interact directly with running code and then uh, different types of objects that you can uh, manage that are really tied to uh, the, the gaming world and the 3D, uh, the 3D games world. I'm not very familiar with that. And we're actually using it to make 2D games. So it's, it's, uh, but you have some high level concepts like levels called scenes and things like that. When it comes the time to, to build, you have a pop-up where you can select the platform you want to, to switch 
too if you if you want to build to a different platform and then you you press a button and then you can either uh, prepare a package or um, uh, run directly the device uh, run the, the software on your device connected to your computer if you want to, to debug for example uh, this is a theory when it comes to um, to uh, Android that's very simple you just press build and then you have an APK and then you can just uh, deploy the, easily on your device. Uh, for a more complex build you will have some kind of uh, operations that you will perform before and after your build in order to enhance uh, the files, prepare some resources, etc. But when it comes to iOS you have a little bit more work involved because uh, Unity isn't able today to produce directly your running application, it delegates a second part of the build to uh, Xcode, and then uh, Xcode will allow you to prepare the package. Xcode will have to be pro um, configured with the provisioning profile I mentioned earlier in order to uh, produce a build that is installable on the target devices you want to target to. One thing I forgot to mention here is that uh, per developer account, you you are allowed to a maximum number of 100 devices on uh, Apple. That's a limitation when you start uh, trying to make tests with uh, schools where you have lots of devices. So you have to yeah, it's jungle a bit with that. Jungle. So, okay. Um, all those operations are uh, contain a lot of manual steps, okay? If you were to do this manually, you have to go and open the build dialog, press build, then you have to uh, go into Xcode, maybe update your provisioning profile, which of course you went beforehand, <laughs> if you haven't forgotten, uh, onto Apple website to register the, the latest you did and uh, update the provisioning profile. It's a lot of, lot of manual steps. And, and it takes a long time, and we don't want to do that, and especially if you have multiple branches or versions of your game for different platforms. So we ought to automate that. Yeah. Some other constraints uh, on the platform we're using. Uh, the first time you install Unity, you have some dialogues that pop up. It's not very practical to install uh, remotely on the, on, the, on the server. Another one is that you don't have that many cloud solutions we wish we could reuse in order to, to make a, a build farm, for example. Uh, another one, that you cannot build multiple projects at the same time. It's a very visual environment, and if you do that, you risk going into troubles. Um, it's not cheap. Uh, 3,000 euros to have a, an environment that allows you to build for, for um, iOS, Android, and uh, Mac Windows, or a professional version, starts to be uh, a bit. And uh, the command line, of course, it scripts the editor, hence the uh, visual uh, limitations. Okay, so how will we automate that? Um, this is kind of the goal, okay? Uh, I will probably have several steps uh, to which um, I'll, I'll, I'll delegate different tasks. The first one will be to script the, the build operation. Uh, um, the, the second one, I'll try to update the provisioning profile if I have a need to. And the third one, I'll, I'll script the X called the build step. And then I'll send the, uh, the, uh, the generated file to uh, test flight, for example. And then my users can go onto the private store and fetch the latest version. All that should be completely automated. So, um, we've selected the Mac hardware, we're using Mac minis, they're cheap, uh, and uh, it's, we have to have a Mac if we want to be able to build from the same platform to build on the different uh, platforms. So you cannot build uh, Mac OS or iOS applications from Windows, so it has to be a Mac. Um, first thing, of course, install Unity, install license. Okay, Jenkins. Um, you have different modes when you install Jenkins. We're using the, uh, the non-demo one where you're, using, you're running Jenkins as a user, not as a system demon. You will have to have a, a recent version of Jenkins to have some uh, friendliness with the SSH. Um, we have a small hack where we actually run Jenkins uh, 
from a terminal running in a in a graphical session because we had some issues with the keys. It has to be it can be solved in another way, but today that's that's our hack. Another thing I ran into uh, in order to remotely access the the, the the Mac, I've tried different solutions. A lot of uh, former VNC software I used to were not working properly. So there is a, a small uh, a hidden app in the, uh, under Mac OS X, at least on under Lion, that allows you to work to access remotely your Mac, and it works well. So that's useful. There are also some instructions if you want to install Jenkins remo uh, remotely from the command line and keep the options you might have selected on the first install. Okay, because of the limitation we have that we cannot run more than one build of Unity at the same time, we took a decision to limit the default installation to one executor. Uh, it has some drawbacks I will see at the end, but uh, for us it works. It works well so far. It's simple. Okay, how would you automate uh, Unity 3D build? As I said, you need to have some kind of a command line that will trigger uh, the editor. Uh, we will have to first write a, a class that will script the editor, and it's known by, by, D2, by, by Unity. And, and second, second step, you will have to write a, some kind of script that uh, execute the editor. Okay, uh, Unity writes its files in a separate log file, so it's not writing them on the standard console. So you cannot, if you use this solution to, to make the first step, that means using a um, shell script as a standard uh, builder, uh, you will not get the, uh, editor and re uh, the editor logs in real time. So uh, we took the decision to write a specific Unity plugin. Uh, this one allows you to retrieve the logs in real time, and it works whether or not you have uh, multiple build machines or not. I'll quickly, I'm not sure if you can see, probably not from the background, but it's, it's a very standard uh, builder code. The only difference here is highlighted there uh, was how to pipe the, the, the file that is written in another location, uh, the uh, pipe, infrastructure that I took from Jenkins wasn't working the way I wanted, so we had to write some our own uh, pipe. And then we stream the, the, uh, the file into the console of the build, so it can appear properly. And this is yeah, some unit tests. You, you can have a look at the code, it's open source. Once you have uh, that plugin, we have the ability to install it from the um, management of uh, management console of, of Jenkins. The same way you can install a NAND installation or Maven installation, you can install a Unity 3D installation. And the next step, it becomes available as well for your jobs. And, um, and then you can add a, a specific step to your, to your jobs to invoke Unity, the specific installation, and then the, uh, the argument line you want. So this step replaces the editor uh, script you might have had uh, on the first solution. Okay, so we here, we have now uh, a way to script the Unity 3D environment. Uh, and then, of course, if you're on the iOS environment, you have the Xcode part, so you have to deal with it. Uh, fortunately, we have a very nice Xcode plugin that works well. The only drawback is that you will have to configure it by hand, a few, a few fields here, um, and retrieve the uh, default setting that, that Unity has chosen for you when it generated the, uh, the uh, Xcode project. I'll skip that. It's not very important, it's very iOS specific. The only thing that you might want to remember is that in order for you to deploy on a private app store, you want to have um, a different uh, in incrementing version number for all your builds. Otherwise, the private app store will refuse the upload. It will tell you that you haven't incremented the version number. So uh, the technical version, that's the last uh, field, uh, text field value in this, in this uh, form is important. So we reduce the build number here uh, from Jenkins to have something that increments all the time. Okay, um, and then you build an IPA, that's important. 
the, the step afterwards, you can reuse, if you have installed the TestFly plugin, you can configure it with uh, the API uh, information you will get from their web page and then uh, and put information there. Uh, this will make Jenkins, once the Xcode task has finished, it will take the IPA and send it to TestFlight, make it available to developers. Um, test flight, you will configure it. For those who don't know test flight, so you, you will have uh, people, users, they register their devices, and then you can group them uh, into distribution lists, so you can configure uh, your build to deploy automatically or make this build available to a particular distribution list or a set of distribution lists. This means that if you have a QA list, for example, the, the internal team, uh, that's what, how we work today. Um, all the people in the QA team will have the latest build available all the time. Then you can manually go onto the, on the server and then when we want to deploy this or make it available to external people, then we can, we can uh, do it through test flight, uh, the test flight website. Okay, so what we have now, we have the Unity 3D builder, uh, the Xcode builder that works well, the test flight and we deploy up to the, to the private store. The only problem here is now if you have someone, uh, a new person that wants to test your device, you don't have the latest provisioning profile, which you have to register onto Apple website. So let's add a small cherry on the cake. Uh, we create a new ADC uh, job. Uh, I'm not going to do, go into the details here, but I have some kind of crawler that parses Apple website and download all the information that is important for us, including the list of devices, the, the provisioning profile, the certificates. You could do some checks here, verify that everything is done properly. And this stores this information um, locally on the disk because today I only have one, um, one build machine which acts as a master slave. Once I have this information stored, we can, can trigger and update every time I, I, I trigger the build um, for that job. I can add a new, um, a new build step in my uh, game job and uh, with a small shell script that uh, reuse the project that is available uh, on GitHub. Uh, I can inject and update the provisioning profile version inside the Xcode project. Uh, remember that Xcode for us is something that is generated out of Unity projects, so we don't have any of, of Xcode projects stored in, in our source control. This is just our artifacts for us. So what we have now, we have two jobs. We have one provisioning, provisioning profile job that uh, downloads information from Apple website and store data. And then the, the new step uh, is the second step in every game job we have that builds for iOS that fetches information from this data store and then is allowed to modify the Xcode configuration before the Xcode build takes over. Okay, what does that mean? That means that as a developer, I'm not anymore, I don't have to, to make a particular build for a particular device anymore. I, if I just have to have someone put the, the device number on uh, the Apple web store and uh, website and then someone else can just click on two builds and generate and deploy the uh, new build for all the developers. I'm not involved in the, in the chain anymore, it saves my time. If you have multiple uh, branches, multiple versions, the same. All this process, if you were to do it manually from start, from scratch, it's half an hour. So if you have a small internet, internet line. So what we have, we have one code, only two developers, and we manage to, to have a, a, I would say, a complex environment today for, for the, yeah. What could we do better? Um, I would like to install Unity 3D automatically, where it's not done today. The first run, because of the dialogues, the license cannot be automated today. Um, yeah. Uh, the plugin, now that I'm fetching the console from, from uh, the editor, from the Unity editor, I'll be able to parse it and uh, supplement the console with extra information. I think that will be very variable. Maybe when you have a build failure, uh, highlight it very well because the, the, today the console is very long. Another one is Unity put some information about your package, about the size, about what type of resources, 
use the most size, so you could have some graph showing where uh, things are getting better or worse. Uh, yeah. The iOS provisioning profile job, uh, today it's a Ruby script that wraps, that scraps the Apple website. So that means I have to check it out or install it on the computer. Uh, now that Jenkins supports Ruby, it would be cool if it could be rewritten directly as a Jenkins plugin. Uh, I hope I can look at that soon, we'll see. And the other issue is the pipeline deployment hog. Um, because of the fact we have only one executor and the fact we have a small internet line, when we make a bill, the last step Im implies deploying and sending a, uh, the application on and pushing it to a test flight, for example. And this can take five, six, ten minutes, depending on the size of the package. And of course, it, it makes the, uh, the, it stalls the build queue. So if we were to find something there, uh, maybe build promotion in order to uh, extract the uh, pushing of the packages on the net, that will allow us to build faster for the other platforms which are waiting in the, in the meantime. But so far we have a, a very simple uh, infrastructure. It works pretty well. Uh, some tips for those who would like to, to uh, make their own plugins or, or implement steps like that, I think um, you have to try to focus on making your steps uh, as independent as possible. You have to uh, be able to swap one version with another. Let's say you start with a shell script and then maybe you will spend time writing a Jenkins plugin. That's valuable because then you understand the, the, the problems. Keep the, around a command line version because that's very useful when you want to test if something is going wrong that you can validate that at least something is working or not. If you have everything uh, in one plugin, if you don't have an ex extracted the API, let's say for deployment, it makes things harder. So yeah, that will be the recommendations. Uh, for tooling, uh, all of these uh, Things are on the web, they are on GitHub. I have some links here for those who are interested and maybe you want to send some pull requests. Mm -hmm. Okay, I went fast because we don't have much time. Um, if you have some questions or comments, you're welcome. So the question is, uh, why do we have only one executor? Okay, the first step of the, of the build pipeline for iOS involved the Unity 3D Builder, which scripts the Unity 3D Editor. That uh, tool has a requirement, a uh, constraint, can only have one instance running at the same time. Okay, so we are stuck with that. Uh, if I try to build two projects at the same time, something bad is going to happen. So we are, to, to, to solve this, and because we want to keep our uh, setup for Jenkins as simple as possible, we are making only one executor, and all, Gen all um, Unity 3D builds are forced then to, to be uh, independent of each other when they run. Okay? Yeah, so the question is, could we put the deployment in an extra job? Okay, and that's what I mentioned very briefly here, but not detailed, that the build promotion will try to, we could, we could try to extract the uh, deployment part, but then we'll have to have two jobs I mean, manage, and, and, then, and then you will have to uh, perhaps have different instances of Jenkins running, one for the, the build with Unity and the other one for the other tasks, and today we have only one server. So uh, we haven't gone that direction yet, but ideally we could, but then we will have to still restrict one instance of Jenkins to, to do one job of Unity 3D at a time. It's okay? Maybe I should, yeah. Uh, 
con concurrently, but then we will have to be, uh, the question is how can we mm, make this work to separate the, um, the, the, the deployment from the normal build while still keeping one instance? Is that right? Yeah. Uh, from my understanding, uh, the, the D2 executors, I don't have, the, 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 I don't have the fine level of, of, of control I will need in order to, to say that particular job will go on that executor on that instance. I will have to have Jenkins instances, I think. Maybe I'm, I'm wrong there, but that's my understanding. So I will have to, to push all the deployment tasks on a, on a particular uh, instance and, and, and keep the Unity 3D on, on, on the one I have today. Maybe somebody has a, has a better solution. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so all these um, tools, maybe they are useful for people doing iOS uh, development. I, I, I hope at least part of it, at least the scrapping of the, of the Apple website. It's useful to ver verify what you have. One limitation we have, as I said, is the Android device limit per application account. So we will one day have to have multiple application developer account for Apple. So we'll have to juggle with all different uh, accounts and these different provisioning profiles. So I hope it comes handy, even more handy uh, at the time. Okay, no more questions? Then we're done. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you.